Hi everyone, Mr. Neighbor here, and today we're going to talk about the scientific method. A method that is not a cookie cutter way to make scientific discoveries, but a process that you start, jump around in, come back to, and leapfrog all the way around um, to discover something um, new. So to, before we get into the scientific method, a little background on two people, Aristotle and Galileo. Uh, Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and metaphysicist, someone who studied the tiny workings um, of things, uh, the most basic wor workings of the world. Uh, so his analysis was based on only logic. So if it made sense logically, which a lot of philosophers base things on, philosophers like logic, then if it made sense through logic, then you hold it to be true. So if something is twice as big, then it falls twice as fast seems logical. That held for 2,000 years that way of thinking. Galileo Galilei, who lived in the Middle Ages, grew up on that, that method of learning, that method of um, science. Uh, but he didn't agree with it. He, dis he knew that knowledge should be founded on experiments and data and something that could be tested. So he didn't agree. And it should be... Um, a thought and then that thought should be tested and if it doesn't test out to be true then you have to reject it or form a new thought from that knowledge you got so this all leads into the scientific uh, method so the scientific method i have seven steps right here that's not necessarily broken to seven uh, this these are just the seven that i wrote out for us so the first step being observing something then forming a question research and collect data, form your hypothesis, test your hypothesis, analyze or observe again, and then draw some conclusion and publish your results. So observe is number one and form a question is number two. So you need to know what your problem is and then ask something that you want to know. So for our example, we're going to um, talk about Archimedes, who wanted to discover if the king's gold crown was really gold. So that's the question. Is the crown really gold? Next, research and collect data. So that might be uh, looking for trends and what's happening in the situation. It might be you recording some observations. It might be going to the library, opening up a textbook, talking to other people that are knowledgeable in the field, um, or looking at other credible sources. So in our example, um, Archimedes knew or looked up or researched that each substance has a unique mass per volume, a density. So gold has a unique density. So we need to figure out if gold and that crown have the same density. So form a hypothesis, which is just an educated guess, what you think might happen. It must be testable, and it should be written as an if this then that statement so for our example if the crown is pure gold then it will displace the same volume of water as the same mass of metal known to be gold so i take um, this much gold and i put it in water and i do the same thing with the crown and that has exactly the same amount of gold and they should displace or move the same amount of water if they don't then the crown isn't really gold. So now we're going to test the hypothesis. So testing the hypothesis, hypothesis means that you need a controlled experiment that, or a model or a simulation. So you need data that's collected to support or reject the hypothesis. And you must eliminate the null hypothesis to show data is significant. And it must be repeatable, so you have to be able to repeat this. So for our testing the hypothesis example, we're going to submerge the crown and the gold in water, and we're going to calculate the density of each and compare. So controlled experiments, what goes into a controlled experiment? You have independent variables, dependent variables, a control variable, um, a control group and experimental group. So an independent variable, that's the condition that can be changed or manipulated. This is the value that is known from, from the beginning and is part of the design of your experiment. 
It's the if part. So that's the composition of the metal. Okay. Uh, the dependent variable is the variable that changes. Um, it's measured during the experiment. It's given in the then part. Um, so our example, it's the density of metals. That's the thing that we're actually going to calculate by putting it in and submerging these things in water. The control variable, those are the things that are held constant. They are the conditions that will not change no matter what we do in the experiment. So that will be the mass of the metal. We're not going to add more to it or take some off of it. Uh, it's the water that it's submerged in. We're not going to change the water in any way by adding salt or anything else. Uh, the temperature of the water is also the same that's being submerged in. So we're not changing those things. If I put it in cold water, I'm going to put the other one in cold water. The control group is the thing that you're testing against. It's the standard that you're comparing things to. So the metal that was known to be pure gold is the control group. We know this. That's our thing we're going to test against. And then the experimental group, uh, that is what we're testing to see if there's a change. That's the crown. That's the experiment. So once you uh, test your hypothesis, we're going to anal <laughs> analyze and observe again. So look for trends in the data that you collected. Uh, there are qualitative data and quantitative data. Um, qualitative data is very descriptive, so you might write down it changed from red to blue, it changed from um, uh, big to small. It's like written out stuff. Quantitative data is actual uh, number data, measurements, uh, the displacement of water. So uh, quantitative has numbers, qualitative has qualities. And then lastly, draw some conclusions. What did you learn? Did you learn that the crown and the pure gold had the same density? That would mean that the crown is actually made out of pure gold. Or maybe it didn't have the same density. So then it wasn't pure gold. You can present your findings to those that wanted it. Um, you may publish it. You might share it with other people. And the scientific method is not a way to prove yourself to be true. It's just to uh, answer your question, yes or no. Did it prove or disprove it? So it's not a way to prove that you're right. It's just a, prove, a way to prove um, truth or an answer to a question. And it should be repeated. So do another experiment. Make sure that that gold that you really got as your control group was good. So find another piece of gold and see if it still happens. Um, change the temperature of the water, see if it still happens. Um, a lot of different things. But testing it, things again leads to um, solidifying the results. So when we share information, we talk about scientific theories and scientific laws. Um, a scientific theory is a well-established explanation acquired through the scientific method and repeatedly tested and confirmed through observation and experimentation. So every time we do this, it seems to come out to be right. An example would be the theory of relativity, which states that um, larger objects distort space-time and or, or fast objects distort space-time. Um, scientific law, uh, it, on the other hand, is a statement or equation that's used to develop a more general theory. It explains what and how, but not why something happens. So Newton's law of gravitation actually um, sort of explains uh, the theory of relativity, even though it came before it. Um, it's a more base version. However, it has the formula to calculate it. So using the scientific law should mimic the scientific theory. It should uh, help the results of the scientific theory come about. So that's all we're going to talk about with the scientific method. Um, next, we'll go into um, other uh, things such as scientific notation and uh, the metric system.